All right, let's keep this thing rolling with some other guys that uh, have moved up or down, and we'll say kind of yay or nay or WTF. <laughs> okay. All right, so Alshon goes from 35 to 48. WTF. Is that what, what warranted that happening? Like Carson Wentz might make it back by week one. <laughs> that makes him go the other way. They signed Mike Wallace. That doesn't scare anybody. So what is it? Well, when we were doing this in February, we said the rookies that were back in the pack, when they get teams, they'll come pushing forward when people get rookie fever. And Sony Michelle, Nick Chubb, Rashad Penny are all up here, and I can only imagine that all three of those guys were behind Alshon Jeffrey when we did this last. Those are three rookie running backs that came Possibly. screaming up. Um, maybe they looked maybe at his guys. age. Maybe they saw he's 28. Maybe. Oh, yeah. it was 27. Now he's 28. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. That, that eight's closer to 30. He's had scared, a birthday. Scared him off. Yeah, I, I was surprised to see that big of a fall. Obviously, Alshon didn't. I guess he did just have another surgery. Um, he had some type of uh, cleanup. I think he up. had a rotator I think he had a shoulder surgury. They say he should be good. Maybe they have the word on the shoulder surgery got out and scared some people back. Yeah, I think he, I think they were basically saying, like, hey, he just did work with a shoulder injury. They're about to clean right? this thing up, and he's about to go back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't really understand that one. I mean, I'm I'm pretty... He's young. 20- Alshon would be a guy that would be on my team, for sure. I'm not scared to put him on my team. He's, he's not like, I'm not drafting him ever. 28 as of February 14th, so he's going to be 28 through the season, and not until again this time next year will he be over the old 28. And yeah, he, he had that surgery, and uh, that's, that's got to be it. That's got to be it. Scared him off a little, a little bit. A little older, boys. had a little shoulder. Right. They sent, And then at the end of this little blurb, it says keeping him in, talk about his contract, four-year deal, keeps him in Philadelphia through his age 31 season. Oh, no. Oh, I'm F and G. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what about the abbreviations? Well, you said no abbreviations. Oh, but um, acronyms are okay? Yeah. yeah. Acronyms are kosh. Correctamundo. They're kosh. Oh, uh, shut your mouth. Who's next? Where are we going? <laughs> uh, well, we talked about Sammy falling from 38 to 46 uh, when we were talking about Tyree Kill. If, you've, if I've got to take a piece of this Chiefs offense, I'm probably just going to take this cheaper guy here. Not a bad and, stab. You know, it's about not as, that I don't like Tyreek Hill, but he's just as cheap as Sammy. Yeah. Sammy, right. Sammy hadn't been this cheap maybe ever. If he could stay on the field, I mean, I think they're already saying he's got rapport. They all. He's got him. rapport. Mahomes loves him. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> rapport. So, I mean, that's kind of how I, I feel about that I whole thing. I can't be unbiased here, so I'll just pass. Right, right. He's passing. Well, <laughs> Sammy, to me, he's back into a spot where he looks f- affordable. Yeah. You yeah. know? Um, so Jinx. at the end of the fourth round, early fifth, if he slides even more, it, you know, depending on what you're looking like here. Uh, what you looking like? I could see, I could see roster and Sammy as my fifth player. Sure. Yes, sir. So, especially we're, since, so we're all yay. Especially since my first three, my first four guys are going to be three running backs and a tight end most times. Maybe, maybe two running backs, a wide receiver, and a tight end. My first four, but most times that's what's. Depends on who's it, with the premium. Dep- you're saying, yeah, 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 yeah. With the premium, yeah. But I'm got I've got my FFPC strategy already locked up. It's <laughs> depending on depend on who what running back is there to be my third one or what wide receiver there might be squeaking in. It's going to be three running backs, a tight end, and then maybe even a fourth running back before I pick a Marvin Jones. We'll see how it goes. All right. So next on the list, Corton Sutton. He's the only rookie I really put on this list. Um, the stumble. He Cortland. fell from 45 to 72, and it's just. There was a lot of love for this guy beforehand. He obviously went to Denver, and now people aren't super excited. At 72 is not a super low pick, but from where he was, and you know, you were saying like, oh, you, all these rookie picks came in and got filled. He went the opposite way that's now. Situation. That's situation. That's what happens when you get drafted to a just team. being maybe buried a little and mm-hmm. not getting a ton of run. Well, next year he could be the dude, exactly. and I like that's, everything about Cortland Sutton, that's, so I like swinging at him at 75 or whatever sure. that's obviously a demarius thomas emmanuel sanders and now they got case keenum as quarterback play which case Keenum's going to be an upgrade to anybody they've had for the last two years that's all that is that's situation yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right well done jay wayne well let's follow that right up with the other bronco <laughs> that was for our boy jeff harper yeah <laughs> just uh yes <laughs> Solid. Yes. Who's yes or no? He's one. He's one of the guys on the YouTubes that. Uh, he said, "I'm going to need this to be." Uh, could you just give me a quick summary, <laughs> and then just answer, so say yes or no? Oh, yeah. See, Jeff? If you could each bring five guys, we did that for you, Jeff. Here's what you do. 
I like you that. know what you guys should do. Yeah. Oh you man, love being told th- what you should do. Thanks for KGFY. The advice. Thanks for that's the what advice. I. That's what you should do. No, GFKY. Thanks. KGFY. Kindly go fuck yourself. Oh, Ooh, go fucking kill kindly. yourself. Yeah, you kindly. gotta put the kindly in there. Then it's not rude. <laughs> yeah. With all due respect, yeah. <laughs> go fuck yourself. Hey, you know I like you, but. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Demarius Thomas. I like your mother more. Cortland Sutton's counterpart here. It moves, goes the other direction, moves up from 69, which he had no business being at 69, up to 55, getting a little bit of respect here back in the, the Demarius don't like Thomas Cortland? name. I, I don't know why, but he, Case he, Keenum. he moved up. Case Keenum, I guess. I don't Gotta know. Gotta be. Emmanuel Sanders is still down at like 119. So, mm. I mean, for, I He's think you're older. Is, it's maybe it's Case Keenum, and maybe it's just people just opening their eyes and being like, "What? What kind of value Demarius Thomas is? Has let been. me grab him. Let me grab him. Let me grab him." Like seven sixty nine ADP is re, is stupid. Like fifty five. That's your solid fifth, start every week from Demarius. Fifty five is going to be the middle of the fifth round, and that's going to be your fifth player, Demarius Thomas. He he's I think he's thirty now, or maybe he's only twenty nine. No, he's thirty. He's thirty. Is that big three zero in front of his name? Yeah. Um, but. Manny's 31. You yeah. forget how good of a player Demarius Thomas was when this offense was humming along, man. Sure. Like, just so good. And yeah. able to take it to the house from anywhere on the, on the uh, field there. That yeah. bubble was... He was scoring bubble. one of those a game. Just taking that little bubble screen and taking it down the field. He no was doubt. nasty. No doubt. He was definitely... He played a huge part in Peyton, Peyton Manning's record-setting season. Yeah, that's I for sure. certainly don't mind rostering him. And I know we're just going down here saying, like, yes or no on some of these guys. And we said yes on some... We're not meaning to say yes on every single guy here, but we kind of pick these guys whether we kind of like them or not. So, Well, other than the McKinnon, which is a 100-point jump, most of these are big falls, and we're looking at it now where these people are falling into a great buy spot. Yeah. You know, and I mean... Well, DT went up. DT came up. And Will Fuller goes down, down 11 spots from 51 to 62. We all liked him when we talked about him in February, even at the 51. Oh, we yeah. were kind of a little bit on the fence, but definitely liked uh-uh. the big playability from... From Will Fuller here, he's getting a little cheap. Gets gets a, almost a whole round cheaper for well, you. Well, what happened was it wasn't the fifty one that we were loving. It was everybody after him as a wide receiver. Right. And I was like, oh, I'd rather go up and get Will Fuller than this guy, than this guy, than this guy. Yeah, I mean, I just listened to that episode the other day, getting ready for this show to see how we kind of did the ADP thing, and we were all for some Will Fuller. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was like you said, the guys that he was around mm-hmm. and what he could do, the potential of with that offense and with Jameis and. Obviously, Kiki, Sean, Kiki comes in there James. and could could take some some targets in the slot there, but Will Fuller just needs one play. Absolutely, Jesus, take Jameis for Deshaun. Deshaun Watson, sorry. Oh, Yeesh. yeah. All right. Well, we're gonna keep it moving. What the hell are we doing here, Harry? <laughs> Good time. <laughs> well all righty then. Well played. All well, well righty played, then. Sir. Mark Ingram, next guy down to close up. Will Fuller. We're pretty much all in on Will Fuller at sixty-two. Oh right? yeah. Why wouldn't you be? It's Gee, let me think. Um, sure. sure. <laughs> Just <laughs> back-to-back clips there. Stupid. Killing it. So Mark Ingram <laughs> down from 50 to 63. Obviously, he's getting a little bit older, and you get the four games. Um, so w- w- how do you I'm feel about that? I'm a little that? surprised that that's, that's only, he's still at 63. I feel like yeah. he's just like been... I'm surprised he started at 50. He should have been higher than that. That's true. He should have well, slid. I think last he time slid we talked back to fifty. Last time we talked about this, it was basically like all these running backs come off the board, and then it's Lashawn and Mark Ingram are like the next guys that are just kind of left floating there because of their after age. all the big guys leave because of their age. And now he gets even a little bit more affordable. And when he gets back into playing, you're going to want to start him every week, right? I mean, that, that, you would that, think. I mean, the question. The, the only, only thing about that is, is if he's back into playing. Why would he not be back? Well, in so the, the Saints hate him, right? Right. <laughs> Obviously, the Saints they didn't last year. They they rode that they filled that thing up again. They're gonna fill it up again. We'll see. But Terrence but, West might be crushing. But how about this? Willie Sneed, right? Yep. Got a four game suspension. Hated him. And they did not throw him the ball. Like, whatever. Now, I'm, now Mark Ingram is much better at his position than Willie Sneed is at his position. Well, these guys want to win ball games. You're gonna put Mark Ingram back in there with old Alvin Kamara, and you're just gonna hammer it down people's throats and beat people up with Drew Brees. I I think so. Probably. And I hope so. Probably. You're, yeah. you're not going to just be like Terrence West is doing so good right now. Yeah, you might ease Ingram back in rather than throwing him back into his full workload. But two, three weeks after Ingram's back, yeah. But then you're talking about six, workload. seven games into the season. All right, he'll help you close out your season. Uh, yeah. In the winter circle, Terrence so, West is your boy. I love Terrence West. Don't get. I love the pickup. If you're going to get a great. You're going to get winning, a solid four games out of my man. If they're I winning just can't games, see Mark if, Ingram is a, is an absolute 
Bonafide number one running back. First off, Terrence West is my boy. If if they're winning games and Terrence <laughs> Wee, Terrence West is doing work, then maybe Mark Ingram doesn't. Maybe this is this is all hogwash. Here. Yeah, I mean Mark Ingram. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Mark Ingram's most likely going to be just fine. But if you're talking about possibly six games that you might not really be that enthused about starting him, he's 28 years old. He's not going to be on the Saints after this year. They don't want to extend him. That's part of why he's all mad. Took some PEDs and frustration, and uh, <laughs> and now uh, and now you know you're gonna get him for ten games, I guess. Okay, and I'll, a bye week, and I'll get nine. him, and I'll take him for next year, and he'll still be good wherever he goes. He's always been a good running back, and he's gonna be 29. Whatever. Well, Sean McCoy's 29. I'll ride him till he's 30, and then I'll get out. I'm getting him in at 63 or five or whatever here. I'm getting a starting running back week to week, and I'm I'm okay with that. I just got a a really solid player that's probably better than. The RB two you swung on two rounds ago, probably, probably. Right, look at what right. look at what Lashawn McCoy is still doing work, like crushed it single handedly. Took people to the playoffs last year. Mm-hmm. I like it. It'll be definitely uh, an interesting thing to see how it plays out with Mark Ingram when he works his way back in there. What is going to be really interesting if Terrence West is playing well. One thing, or I'm, whoever they decide to put in that role, because it's not a definite that Terrence West. He's just a veteran they brought in. They got Boston Scott and oh, Terrence somebody West is, else. But we'll have know. a stranglehold on that <laughs> pounding job. Yeah. One, <laughs> that bounding job. One thing in Mark Ingram's favor in regards to his age is that he's never had more than 226 carries in a season. He's only broken. He's he a light, light roast. 230 last year, which was, well, no. Yeah, two, it's because so, he'd get going and they'd throw him on the sideline and be like, whoa, bo. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to quit having sex with the coach's wives, <laughs> man. What are you doing? Not that he, we don't have that information. We don't know if that's real. No, it's for that's sure, what we've speculated for, sure. for years. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a speculation on our part. All right. Next. Let's, enough of Mark Ingram talk. Funches topples down. Funches topples down from 52 to 64. Not, none of us really are big Funches guys, but could be. The 52 was just hard, horrible taste in my mouth. It's hard to stomach. Yeah, yeah. punt yeah. that. Mm-hmm. Now you get a whole nother round back. 64 is a little bit more palatable, but I'm probably out. Yeah, just, I mean, Alex freaking Collins is down here at 68. There's no chance I'm taking Devin Funches over that guy. Robert Woods is after him. Get get out of here. There's with Mark, no chance with, I'm with Devin taking Funches. Funches over Robert Woods. Yeah, I, I, I can't, can't do it. I'm taking Crowder over him, too. Fair enough. Drake stock up, 60 to 67, seven Getting points on the Dow. Finally. <laughs> seven points. Getting a little respect. Getting a little I bit like more it. respect. I mean, we've talked multiple times about how I'm – I'm in on some Drake. Let me get some Drake. I'm, so we I got mentioned no this, is, this is this we, is God's plan. From sixty-seven <laughs> to up to sixty, we mentioned the free agency happened and the draft happened, and they signed Frank Gore and they bring in Kalen Balage. And I guess a lot of people were worried that the Dolphins were going to do something with a little bit more name cachet than that. Obviously, Frank has plenty, but he's thirty-seven. So <laughs> Drake at sixty into the fifth, the very last pick in the fifth round, and. Roster him. Give me him. Give me the Drake. All day. You like the Drake? Love the Drake. <laughs> Every damn day. <laughs> um, so this one was pretty perplexing to me when I saw it. I double checked this thing. Uh, OJ Howard, a huge drop from 66 to 97, which is just makes that a tasty vittle for me. I'm I'm interested in that playmaker and putting him on my team. A tasty what? Tasty vittle. What is a vittle? Uh, some num nums. <laughs> 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 you didn't even have to see what he just did to hear it. You could hear <laughs> you, what it was. You know. Oh. It was something special. Uh, That's hilarious. So, I mean, obviously. In case you, he's feeling frisky, he's got a tank top on. <laughs> Guns out. It's tank top heavy. OJ um, Howard. OJ Howard with a big drop. They they brought Bright back. That's the camera Bright effect, huh? Still still doesn't warrant 30 spots for me. 33. I just, there was a time That's, and a place where OJ Howard looked like the baddest dude on the field when they were throwing him the ball. Anytime he caught the ball, he looked absolutely ridiculous. He looked like Calvin Johnson. But when you, you he's bigger. The, there's a good uh, Twitter stat. Um, what was it? Yeah, something about how OJ Howard had almost only 200 yards less receiving than Evan Ingram, and same amount of touchdowns on like 70 less targets or something. Some crazy, crazy like about that. So he's his basically his efficiency and his production on his limited limited target share were outrageous. Six touchdowns. But you give me that that 97 right there. I got no problem. He had. He had 39 targets, six touchdowns, yeah. 26 catches. Yeah, what a rate. Woo, 26 catches, six it's touchdowns. One every four catches or and something. And some of those touchdowns, two of those touchdowns for sure were like 50 yards away. Oh, yeah. He, 
some, so, some big plays. It's absolutely big plays. Nobody so can that's, tackle. I mean, that's it's a crazy fastest fastest big man out there. Crazy uh, price drop there. So I'm buy, not only like some. Also, you can equate some of this to sending out offers and things like this is where the values are certain starting to kind of fall around and stuff like that. So this is kind of telling you a little bit of where the valuation of of the general public's uh, play is on these guys. So, sure. you know, see if somebody's upset about O.J. Howard on their team. Yeah, um, basically, I mean, O.J. Howard at a 97-ish average ADP, I mean, I I would love to roster him for that. And and obviously, that's not a position for me that where he's going to be my only tight end. I'm I'm gonna I want to have him. Oh, on a for rush, sure, you can't you know? do that. But I'm at 97. <laughs> if you if you if it, let's, <laughs> if this is startup, if this is startup and not in a, not an existing league where you're going to try to trade for him and looking for him for this value, if this is startup, you got obviously there's two ways you can go about it. There's only two ways of whether you have a one before him or one after him. You know, um, if you have one before him, then OJ Howard is a just a splash play. Hey, look what I got. Y'all boys don't want to mess with me. He's my second tight end, and I don't even need him right now. And if you take him and you're looking for somebody after him, I didn't look at the tight ends necessarily to make this argument, but the ones that are obviously they're going to jump off the page for me that are basically free is like your Jared Cooks and those types of guys. You can put ASJs you can, and you can put the value of a tight end in your on your roster of someone who where you might have had to take you might have had to go up two rounds to go get Trey Burton or somebody like that that's going to produce, but you can take the the pedigree of what you of Calvin Johnson at the tight end position, put him on your roster, grab a guy like Jared Cook or an Austin Severian Jenkins for pennies on the dollar at the end of the draft and then have production. Yeah. But then you got, uh, you know, just a dark well, horse yeah, on your roster. I'm certainly that, not drafting Jordan Howard to be my OJ guy Howard. or OJ Howard to be my guy. I'm just drafting him because either I think there's a ton of potential there and I can yeah. get him a little later. He's not quite Calvin Johnson. I mean, Calvin Johnson's all his metrics are not quite as good as Calvin Johnson's right. metrics were, but he is twenty He's a pounds heavier. Tight so. end, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can get Trey Burton still around the ninety six area um, in here. So, well, all things being equal, then I mean, I'm I probably I'm a, I'm drafting Trey Burton over OJ Howard. Yeah, I think I, I think I'm with you there yeah. on that particular. Just because I know I can, I, I, as like the reason I like Howard at ninety seven is because I draft him and I don't have to use him. I'm just drafting him as a potential and a year down the line i could be super excited about it trey burton i'm drafting as like you were saying to be my starter starter and mm -hmm. hopefully be my stud tight end right now for sure but that draft capital yeah whatever they just but, but that paid capital for trey burton mm -hmm. that True. paid capital i like it that straight capital well the other guy who got drafted with him is the next guy on the list ninjoku gains value here from so. 75 to 71 still really high that's too high with too many weapons over there. People, he is a folk but he's hero. A, People, he's a folk, folk hero. He's a freak athlete, though. He's fun, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. For 26 picks later, I'm going OJ Howard. You can't. I mean, I love it. Yeah, I'd love. Fair enough. I love the idea of Njoku. I certainly do. And he's a folk hero, and he's an Indian chief or whatever. I mean, he's freaking awesome. <laughs> But he's like the chief of his tribe. He comes from he comes from the president, basically. Yeah. He's top down. He, he got got a bloodline. Like, it's he's a ridiculous. Family he's a born he's, leader. A born leader. He's awesome. But his whole family's full of leaders. There's no way no, I he's can just pay, a leader. There's no way I could pay seventy one at an ADP for him. I yeah, just I mean, can't I've been it. I've been in a couple drafts. And just he's just I want him real bad. Yeah. I just can't do Even it. Even in the auction, the he gets right. ran up. It gets just ridiculous price. Can't in do an it. Auction. Can't do it. But but to his credit, I mean. Tyrod's coming in. He he threw it to Charles Clay a ton. He, the Charles Clay is probably the leading receiver on the Bills team. Don't have those stats in front of me. If you're watching Baker Mayfield tape or uh, Mark Andrews tape, that boy he got he, he got he got run. Maker Mayfield is trying. Maker Mayfield. To, Maker, <laughs> Maker Mayfield is is straight the looking tight end. down the seam. Loves the seam a lot. Joke who's going to crush some seam. <laughs> yeah, he's a seam eater. So I mean, if if Joku. You know, oh, improves Jay on Wayne's last of the time year. Here. This this value could jump up even higher. Oh. <laughs> Mind blow. Explosion. Flawless that being said, victory. I don't think I could. I don't think I could do it. No way. All right. Well, uh, let's keep it moving. In the sake of time, how about a Jai? Fifty six to sixty nine. Keep falling. I'm in. Second best running back on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Old Clement's dad, Big Co, is actually Clement's dad. So <laughs> he's my cousin. <laughs> 
Um, I think there's a, there's, a, there's a chance of, of him being a workhorse in this role. I think this is super cheap. He was very effective by the end of the season, and they were giving it to him. I'm 100% okay with stabbing at J.H.I. I, just so a year ago, he was up in the 20s or whatever. If they're giving anybody the rock consistently, he's going to be really good in this offense. There's no doubt about it, but they're bringing back old man Sproles, and they got but He Clement, doesn't really take anything away and, from a Jai as a workhorse role. He's I bet catch but the balls. They've they've been play, employed the four back system last year. They certainly did. I'm not. That's, and, I, I, I but right here, it doesn't saying. cost me that much. And like, he could potentially. There was Still people who enough. were like he was like top five last year. Yeah. And he he has the talent and ability to do so. Yeah. And at this rate, like you could easily be getting an RB one if the Eagles want to yeah. feature a guy. Yes. Like this is a great offense. It's a yeah. It's a gamble, but you're they right. They traded yeah. for him. The upside is the Eagles have a great potent offense. They just oh, two weeks out of this guy, you trade him for anything you want. <laughs> Seriously, I know. But I just think Corey got Clement that bone on bone him. thing still going on. Oh, for sure. That's why I love him at fifty six to sixty nine. Week the week week three of the preseason, they realize what they got in Clement and they cut him. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, they, no, they you're right, Casey. On he's on a rookie contract, so he's not going to be an Eagle next year. You're right at a sixty nine ADP. You don't have to put a ton into what could be a really really good player, especially if you went some got some wide receivers early and you're looking around for somebody that could make some hay for you. A guy could do it, but he could also be one of three or four guys and getting splitting up production and you really pull your hair out about putting him in your starting lineup. But yes, if they decide to lean on him, all his the upside is tremendous. Yeah. Give me Lamar Miller over Jay Ajayi. Lamar Miller. We're not there yet, Jason. I know, but he's lower than him and that's a guy I'd rather bring up and, uh, and grab instead there you of that go. guy. Sure. Definitely. Probably going to take Joku too over Jay Ajayi. I don't know. Let's, let's Way more it. Ajayi jock riders than either than uh, Lamar jock Miller there. <laughs> Yeah, nobody rides as Lamar's jock. Except it's for us. Clean-ass jock. Sterling Shepard drops, uh, drops some more, so I'm in on a jive. Fuck yourselves. Uh, <laughs> Sterling from 60 to 78, which we were all in on Sterling at sick early. I'm pretty sure we were. How does he drop to 78? I don't have any idea what's going on here. Because Odell didn't get traded? Yeah, I guess. Odell didn't get traded, and then they act, and then they brought in Saquon, who's going to get targets. I get it. Saquon and, you know, that's touchdowns to Saquon. That's that's plenty yeah. of carries to Saquon. But Evan Ingram's out there that, roaming around. I, there's no chance that at 78, I'm not putting Sterling I'm on I'm taking a stab on him as being yes, one of my sir. my two on my receiving core here. Yeah, unfortunately, the way I'm building my teams, it's I might need Sterling to be my second most wide receiver. That's what I'm hey, saying. But, but, that's, but like we said this the last time we did this exercise, like I would be – I might Sterling might be the second wide receiver that I pick for my team, but then I'll be picking players later that would be starting over him until I see that Sterling's ready to take take that volume role that I would need to have him in my starting lineup every every week. Yeah. Let's take right. this shit to the next level. So Deion Lewis is next. We talked about him in February. We hate him at ninety seven. I I I think we pretty much all passed on him at ninety seven, to be honest with you. And that was I, well that I was I before he had a landing spot. Was, that was it back when? Are you sure? That was back when yeah. they were saying the Lions need to get Dion Lewis. Uh, now we didn't know where he was going, what he was doing. Yeah. Okay, well, so what do you got? Seventy three, Dion Lewis. I mean, no, go back to ninety seven. I snap him up at seventy three. I'm. I, that's where I got to be taking Sterling Shepard. Sorry, buddy. What do you think, Jay Wayne? I mean, you guys made a pretty good case for this Tennessee offense. Yeah, and, I think this is a good stab at a wide running back too here. Oh, I do too, no doubt about it. But I, by the time I get to this point, I got right. You're hoping, right. but you're I, hoping that you don't even really need Deion I Lewis, but somebody's going to need him. I said this last year. I'm going to say this every single year. By the time I'm in the seven seventy third ish ADP, I'm going to have a, a a handful of backs on my team, and I'm gonna be looking for the Robert Woods and the Sterling Shepherds and the Crowders, and I'm I'm picking up my catches right here. Yeah. Yeah, but Deion Lewis could be Deion probably Lewis gets plenty in there, of get catches. Some catches. You could go sure. get a receiver that'll yeah. get you catches. Deion Lewis could definitely be that back. He could he could do Duke, Duke Johnson and Christian McCaffrey things no problem back in RB one this year. Boy, that Great boy, pick. elusive. Great pick. I'm just I'm gonna be full on running back by the time I what get. What you got, spot. Jay Wayne? Probably still take Lamar Miller. Woo! But all right, I feel you, dog. But uh, I mean, I can't I can't really too much argue with Deion Lewis. I don't want to take Devontae Parker. Two good backs right here. You can double down on Deion Lewis and Lamar Miller for your zero RB strategy and be all right. Or take a Jai. Pick. <laughs> there or you Alex go. Collins right above a Jai. There's a couple of guys back yeah. here if you want to lower the Brushed load over Alex Collins receiver. real we did. quick. We I did. mean, that at 68, that is a freaking steal to me. Like, that dude looked awesome. You go back and watch some of those games, and yeah. he is bu- busting dudes up. 
for I mean, sure. He, and then and you throw on the catching ability. He just started to all of a sudden catch three or four balls a game. Flacco's dumping it down to him. Mm. Yeah, mm. no. Mm. I mean, two things. 68 two things. Day. Two things and pros and cons. If Lamar Jackson's in there, his running back, his, the running back explodes even more because of the running back threat. What happens with running back? Unfortunately, six, Lamar quarterback Jackson's probably run. not going to be in there. But really, Bo, you got to. <laughs> this is stuff that you have to talk about. If, if so, you, if you'll let me finish. But I second, agree no, with you. The threat if of Lamar, Lamar Jackson, Jackson is your running back. Then sky's the limit for any of the running backs. But I don't, Casey might have been about if to say Lamar that. I would Jackson, like Lamar Kenneth Jackson Dixon, to be your running back. Kenneth, Kenneth Dixon's still there. And that's the question mark for me. I I can't take nothing away from what Alex Collins did. And I've and in in my practice reps and my mock drafts, I'm grabbing Kenneth Dixon. But I mean, I'm I'm, dra- I'm grabbing Collins too because he's sitting around. This this is late for a guy who was RB one territory down the stretch. And I'm I agree. I'll put I'll take him here too. I'm just saying a pro is a potential in having a ridiculously mobile quarterback to open up the running lanes for your running back. A potential negative is. Kenneth Dixon, a three down back, catch it, run it, grind it out, has two bad years in the NFL to put on his resume to get started, but crazier things have happened. It happened. Marquise Lee happened after two years of everybody putting him out out to pasture. It's not just Kenneth Dixon who's coming back and could be good. I think Javorius Allen was just fine last year. Collins was awesome. There's no doubt about it that Collins was awesome. I completely agree. And I wish that there was less uncertainty in this backfield i think collins will still get all three can do it yeah all, that's what i'm saying all yeah. three of those guys can do it but the other two i don't think, I think they'll be i think it'll be flacco and i think that they're going to want to do what the ravens normally do and run the ball a good bit with a decent offensive line and, and be able to pass it when they need to and, field and play defense yeah all these things so i think and he's Alex the collins, goal line back he's getting the goal line carries yeah, i just it's it'd be a very interesting it's, it's, i don't think they like kenneth dixon they didn't like him he's before. Still, he got well, that's hurt. Not, there's he no got way. suspended. Then he got hurt. There's no. If they didn't like him, he wouldn't be there. That's there's. He's I still completely there. completely disagree with that. If I don't think they, I think, I think they, they love like, him. Yeah. <laughs> if they didn't like him, he would be gone. Um, They've given, I he's given I him plenty of reasons to do it. The if you're going to leave me injuries. hanging with with Alex Collins around at 68, yeah. or maybe even he slides a little lower for sure. I'll I'll snap him up. I think I would personally. I'd rather take a shot on Jay Ajay than Alex Collins, just because. I don't know. I feel like the the talent. I don't know. Yeah, I just feel like I want to jive over over Collins if I'm taking stabs there. Yeah, I can just I just remnants of Jay. I mean, of, he was of, he of was Alex nasty. Collins Nobody running. wanted to tackle that nah. guy. And that's that's what I'm going on. What I saw him put down on the field and what I saw him do. But I don't see why that that's would ever enough. stop. You know. Fair enough. I agree. I'm, I'm I think Alex Collins is a great pick, and then you just go get the. Uh, you know, get take Kenneth Dixon late. Get sure. Kenneth Dixon a little bit later, and if or somebody, it, Allen, well, that's one what, or the other. Somebody, there's a Kenneth Dixon guy in the draft. Whether or not you have Alex Collins, it's gonna be like I'm gonna grab Kenneth Dixon because I think he's gonna come take that backfield, and then you just grab Buck Allen in the last pick, and then you got them both. And if Alex Collins happens, he happens, and if he doesn't, then you tried. Right. Well, you've uh, let's keep it moving here. Lamar Miller. Um, sorry for rushing over Alex Collins. I know you like. I know that's your boy. Is that right? Yeah. I got it in. Yeah. That's what we do. Um, where are we at? Lamar Miller, you said it multiple times. He was up from he's up from ninety three to seventy five. Finally, putting some respect on that name. Because mm. um, D- Dante Foreman might end up on the pup list. Maybe that's why he's he, coming he, up. Deshaun's all he- healthy reports, no knee brace at practice. Any which way, he was a criminally undervalued at ninety three and seventy five is where he should be. He's he's. I think this is a great another stab to take. At, at this point in the draft, if you have to draft receivers, I can understand that to this point. But maybe I mixed the receiver in a little early with the with yeah. the notion that I know I can come back here and grab my third or fourth running back and it be Lamar Miller, Deion Lewis, Alex Collins. Here's one of those guys. Here's how a million I, ways it's going to more than one way it's going to get. Every year with the new ADP, you can do is startups every single year, all that good stuff. Playing them, you know more than 10 dynasty leagues for me now i know that's not many for some people but that's a ton for some people whatever every year with this adp it makes it fun to do mocks and i just love them and i've been eating them up the if if, if i don't care if i got a handful of running backs already and i think i quote unquote need a wide receiver if lamar miller's hanging around and i think he's gonna be a great I, if lamar miller's my fifth running back and i've only got eight players i'm laughing because yeah. i'm still gonna i'm gonna make things happen when it comes to catch i say it all the time Catches, I'll find catches, and I'm still, I'm nowhere near drafting a quarterback right here, guys. So if this is my no. sixth, or you know what I mean? If this no. is my seventh or eighth player, he's off in the, the two hundreds. My quarterback's in the two hundreds. Right. I, I just got no interest in, by, in in anybody like that. So right. we kind of glossed over.
over to Sean Watson at oh, 53. Oh, there's you'll notice that, that there is yeah. zero quarterbacks on this list because I don't care. Deshaun Watson at 53 <laughs> is probably a value. So but 75, you're in the seventh round. So you could be a tight end and a and two and you could four running backs, a tight end and and a and a wide receiver and be like, man, I should probably take a wide receiver. But there's Lamar Miller and I'm just going to punk everybody because I I'm full. I got two running backs on my bench already. I'm stacked. And I'm just I'll, I'll take a chance on Lamar Miller and see what happens. Big Co might not even draft a wide receiver this whole this whole draft. Last week he didn't need a running back or a, a quarterback at all. He could start the whole year with no quarterback. <laughs> this this week no no wide receivers. I don't need any of them. I'm going straight RBs. Oh, that is so funny. Come on now. <laughs> I listened to our podcast back, and I I was so intent on my Lamar Jackson talk that I really didn't even register the how's the, how's air, the air up, up there. there? <laughs> It was hilarious, cold. hilarious <laughs> listening to it. But that's not what I meant. Uh-huh. I, tried to, I tried to follow it up. <laughs> listening to it back, I started laughing. I was like, oh, that's what they were making a big deal about. I tried to follow it up with, uh, you know, I picked up Alex Smith off waivers. Like, I'll start, I'm I'm going to start a quarterback. It's just not what anybody wants. <laughs> All uh, right. All right. Let's, let's get to this break. Let's do the break. So we can finish this thing up. Let's do it. <laughs> 